Hello there, it's Austin. Today we're going to spend a few minutes talking about the Anvil Steam Condenser. It's not really a good way to get this in the frame, but this is it. So let's get started. Quick disclaimer, Anvil did send me this product. Uh, they wanted to know what I thought of it, but didn't ask me to make a video or publish anything. But I'm making one anyways. In a homebrewing setup, a steam condenser is a device that cools and condenses the hot vapor coming from the top of your kettle during the boil process. Anvil starts at around $140, but with the lid tube kit and the adapter to connect it to the top of the foundry, it'll be about $215 for the entire system that I'll be looking at today. To start with everything that comes out of the box of the steam condenser, first thing is, well, the instruction manual. Besides the instructions, we have two main pieces of tubing, as well as the nozzle spray assembly, the lid adapter, some water input fittings, and the tri-clamps to hold it all together. All the major components are stainless steel, besides the water fittings and, of course, the tubing that allows water into and out of the system. For the actual assembly process, well, you start with the lid of your kettle. If you have a foundry, there's already a hole at the top. If not, you might need to drill one, but then the right angle piece of tubing and the T-joint piece of tubing clamp together. The spray nozzle clamps to the top, and finally the last step is sliding your output hose onto the barbed fitting at the bottom. At this point, your completed steam condenser is ready to drop onto the top of your kettle. I guess I should mention the only pre-assembly that I didn't show there was this nozzle that threads into the bottom of the spray assembly, and then this plastic disconnect that threads into the top. Wasn't a huge fan of the plastic threads on this piece, but it was nice that it is a push fitting that's compatible with the tubing that I already had. Speaking of that tubing, I used the tubing that I use with my RO system. I believe it's quarter inch tubing that pushes in place and then threads onto my faucet diverter. Out of the box, the steam condenser does come with a hose connector and not a faucet diverter, so keep that in mind if you're brewing somewhere that might not have access to an outdoor hose or maybe a washer dryer hose. During your brew day, once the wort starts boiling, it's time to cut on your steam condenser and then drop it on top of the kettle. That's uh, pretty much all that you have to do. At this point, the water will condense the steam down into a bucket or reservoir and leave you with a kind of hoppy smelling warmish water. I started by boiling at a lower power as suggested by the instructions, but even running my Anvil Foundry 6.5 gallon at 100%, I never saw temperatures over 105 degrees or so coming out of the bottom of the system. As you can see here, a comparison between boiling with a lid on and off, it pretty much completely eliminated the steam coming from my kettle. It won't ever 100% cut out the smell, especially if you're taking the lid off for hop additions and other things. I didn't see a huge change in boil off while using the condenser, right around one gallon per hour. Took a little bit of tweaking on the power level to find that good balance to keep my efficiency consistent. Surface temperatures ranged from mid 100s at the top where the hot vapor was coming out, down to about 85 degrees after you pass the spot where the nozzle was actually spraying the vapor to cool it down. Worth noting that my groundwater temperature sits around 60 degrees or so, which is about average I guess, but if you have warmer groundwater that will impact the efficiency of your condenser. As far as the quality water that the condenser outputs, it looks pretty much the same as my groundwater. It did kind of have a surprising hop aroma to it, so probably wouldn't use it to make coffee or anything. Overall, I think Anvil Steam Condenser is a quality piece of equipment. It certainly cut down on the smell coming from the boil, which can be especially nice with styles like a kettle sour, where sometimes the boil can smell more like socks than actually beer. Cleaning and storage are pretty simple, considering how easily it goes together and then comes back apart. At that point, it's pretty easy to drop it into a bucket of PBW or another type of cleaner and rinse it off, have everything nice and clean for your next brew. Really, the only downside is that it does use 7 to 10 gallons of water that you might not normally use during your brew day. But with a little bit of planning, it's not too difficult to find a use for that water, especially if you're cleaning with PBW at the end of your brew day, or prepping a batch of sanitizer that you might use to clean a fermenter or purge a keg later. Like all the stuff Anvil makes, it's an excellent piece of equipment that you'll definitely find a use for if you're brewing inside or live with roommates or anyone else that doesn't necessarily want to smell beer it's not going to improve the beer that you're producing in your kitchen or in your shed, but it will certainly make it a more habitable place to be for a couple hours afterwards. Cheers! <laughs>